Hey folks, beautiful, white, positive brothers and sisters and most beautiful people on the planet. Nathan, the warrior apostle for white well-being here with you. <laughs> uh, just to tell you how bad things are, uh, which we all know, but man, Yet another day of just constant anti-whiteism. And just to just to make the point <clears throat> that things are bad. We know they're bad. Things are bad. Things are really bad. Things are one step away from South Africa. That's the only Pretty, pretty much the only way it can get worse or significantly worse <clears throat> so y'all know about my uh, experiences in uh, the Los Angeles area the anti-white Indian Indians that I ran into <laughs> and you know what I was thinking about that I didn't call them anti-white and I should have I was so, just wanted to be beyond reproach, uh, that, um, I mean, it was still a victory for us, but, you know, when that one guy told me to, uh, not come back to his motel, uh, I should have said, hey, you're anti-white. <laughs> Because he clearly was. Um, but he just defeated himself right there. But I should have added that little icing on the cake. You're anti-white. See you later. And I should have said that to all of them. If they would have even understood me. But <clears throat> anyhow. Fast forward to today. Again. I'm not looking for this stuff at all. All I wanted to do was get from point A to point B as peacefully as I possibly could. And you heard from me this morning when I was fired up from LA starting this journey to Vegas where I am now. Finally just got here at late at night. Um, so I... Uh, took a took had to take a couple buses locally to get to a bus in downtown LA which is where you saw me make another video about all the anti-white advertising around there and so forth so downtown LA I took a bus to Vegas and basically in the LA area extremely non-white lots of very extreme direct anti-white media non-white and anti-white media advertisements etc um just and just a very non-white environment very not our bio spirit just extremely not our bio spirit so really felt like a foreigner there So, and most whites in, in those areas are suffering from extreme white noir, probably beyond hope. I wouldn't even want, <laughs> I didn't even, kind of people I wouldn't even want to try to even share going through with. I'm just, I assume, let them, let them go. Um, you know, they basically, they're too far gone. But, um, so I get on this bus to Vegas. It's a white driver. One of the, I, probably the only other white guy on the bus besides me was the driver. Seriously. Maybe one other passenger. There was like 20 or 30 people on the bus. Pretty full. And there might have been 
one white passenger, possibly Hispanic, Latina. Uh, the driver looked white, looked really white, but then again, he was, had a lot of, and, of white noir going on. I mean, extreme, 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 extreme. Talk like a black guy. <laughs> had internalized all that uh, all that blackness, all that white noir, and uh, it's disgusting. But you could tell he'd been, it's been going on with him for a long time. And uh, anyhow, he could po he could have possibly been non-white, one of those, one of those non-whites who are a, extremely anti-white from a tiny country in the Middle East. Maybe not but possible. Anyhow, he had just an extreme case of white noir. He was talking a lot during the trip and I could hear him talking to a non-white black guy. Not of the highest character, to put it lightly. And, um, Uh, and also pr this guy, this white driver was probably anti-white, at least a little bit you know, he saw this message and kind of uh, just <laughs> just kind of wanted to just toss me to the side um, and then all the other non-whites blacks Latinos, Mexicans, um, probably a few others, uh, mostly black, did not say anything to me about no white guilt. Uh, there was there was a lot of anti-whiteism I could sense. I could just sense it. It's just the environment, but they didn't say anything to me. So, so just being surrounded by that that non-white environment, the white noir, the anti-whiteism that I can just feel. Then we finally arrive in Vegas, and I walk from the bus to this hotel. And at first it was okay. It was quiet at the, the bus station where we were at. But then as I got closer closer to this hotel in the downtown area, which I've stayed at several times before over the past couple of years, um, it's just out of convenience that I'm doing it for, for tonight. Uh, a couple nights, it's, you know, it's one of the cheaper ones, but, um, you know, casino here and everything, just like all the hotels here. Uh, anyway, as I, at first it's quiet, away from, from the hotels, as I get closer to the hotel area downtown, I see druggies, you know, homeless, which is common. Then as I get really close to the hotel, I see uh, three letters, Bravo, oh, I don't know my uh, military, uh, what you would call it. <laughs> um, Alphabet. Mm. Bravo, Lima. M. <laughs> um, I don't know what M is. Bravo, Lima, M. Uh, maybe Motel. Bravo, Lima, Motel. Or, uh, yeah. 
We know those letters. I haven't seen those letters. Well, I've seen them around, but not as much as I would have expected, you know, in person, all my travels. Um, but I saw those letters spray painted on the sidewalk, just approaching the hotel. And then I noticed a lot, a concentration of non-white, non-whites of that variety the dark kind, lots of them, and of course, the antithesis of high character, and it was like gangland, I mean, just hanging out on the corner, packs of them, and that, that was really feeling like, like I'm in, like I'm at a, a, a you know, a base for this organization. This is like a stronghold of theirs, is the feeling. Because um, they're just, they're just all over. They have that impunity. You can just tell they think they can do what they want. This is like, they probably think of this as their territory, like a game. I'm sure they do. So I see him outside way more than I ever have in the past couple years. And granted, anti-whiteism is nothing new. Non-whites dominating this area is nothing new of the dark kind. They've been plentiful here for years, probably decades. Ever since I first started coming here a couple years ago, you know, often. But now it's like, Occupied, it's like occupied kind of thing. And I mean, not officially, of course, but it's the way it seems. And uh, just, I mean, just all over the outside of the casino, uh, just almost like they were posted, <laughs> posted there, you know. And here I am walking with my no white girl shirt. I'm just like, yeah. Check it out. And uh, nobody said anything to me on the outside. And then I walk in. And uh, I see mostly non-whites. Again, not too big of a surprise, but way more non-whites than I've ever seen at this casino hotel before. I mean, it was just the whole place was just... It was literally like, like a gang was just, you know, hanging out in their territory at one of their bases kind of thing. Just absolutely all over every table, every machine, um, just putting their mark on everything, you know. So it absolutely felt like I was walking through gang territory of that variety of the anti-white variety, the anti-white, non-white variety. And it felt like being, you know, like, like a Bravo Lima motel base, <laughs> stronghold. And uh, anyway, so, um, This is, they definitely feel that impunity. It's, it's apparent, it's palpable. They feel emboldened. They feel they got the establishment on their side. And, but even such, standing there, checking into the hotel, by a non-white at the front desk, uh, no comment on my shirt, walking through this sea of enemy, victimizer, non-white, anti-white territory, just densely populated with non-white, almost guaranteed anti-whites. I mean, that's really just felt like walking through the belly of the beast. No one said a thing to one of the only white guys in the place. 
with this on his chest. Powerful. Powerful. I'm not trying to, I mean, there was no encounter, so it wasn't like, oh yeah, you know, I, I had a battle and I won. No, it wasn't really, there was no real battle or confrontation. But at the same time, I feel kind of like I got through unscathed, which is a victory. Wearing the message in an environment like this is a victory nonetheless. Because displaying the message anywhere is a victory. Getting it into the minds of an anti-white saying, Hey pal, there's a new game in town. It's called the Going Free Narrative. <clears throat> and then of course to any whites, and the whites here are absolutely just uh, suppressed, oppressed, just, you know, just absolutely downtrodden, just, you can tell, um, and, you know, they can see it as a beacon of hope, a message for them, a message of love for them when they are surrounded by anti-whiteism and they don't know what to do about it except hang their head down. So I really am glad when I see a few whites here and there say, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm representing you. There is some hope. Plenty of hope. Check it out. We got... We got a... A seed coming through for a new day on the horizon of the western sunrise. We're coming back. Just to let, just to let you all know, you know, all the whites out there that hopefully have some white positivity. Um, so, giving hope to whites who are very downtrodden. Even in such a non-white, anti-white environment as this. And showing these non-white, anti-whites that there's something they're not going to be able to, they're not going to be able to defeat from us. We're back on the rise. Nothing is stopping us. Nothing is or will stop this. It is inevitable. Inevitable. People like me, people like Raymond Foster, people like Jason Kuna, people like all the greats we all know. We are all making sure this is happening. So this is awesome. Anyway, just to finish up. So ultimately a victory, hard earned, just trudge through the day. Just just in a sea of anti whiteism It's draining, you know? Especially when you got this on, no white guilt. But nonetheless, a victorious day with no confrontations. You know, got a little sun, got a little burnt, got a little drained, got a, got a little sore, but <clears throat> anyhow, checking in, also, also to talk about, to, to, to bring up how bad things are as far as the effects of anti-whiteism on our society, which as we all know, COVID, COVID right uh, so just as a last little tidbit when I was checking in at this hotel um, I got questioned about you know uh, 
do I have any symptoms of COVID? Have I been in contact with anyone? And I got my temperature taken. And I got this wristband to say that I'm okay. My temperature is okay to be in this casino. All because of anti-whiteism. Masks required. Everywhere I was in California, masks required. Here in Las Vegas, masks required. So I get that whole thing and then I'm walking through the anti-white sea to my room and there's now, unlike before, there is now a security guard posted, of course happened to be non-white, of the dark variety, posted at the base of the stairs to check people um, that are going up to their rooms that they are COVID approved with this wristband. Added security, added tyranny. Why? Why do we have to go through all this trouble? All because of anti whites So I've seen changes in this specific hotel over the years. This is different. Then I walk up and I see that they've remodeled the place, this floor. It's an old hotel. And I noticed they put a lot of pictures up. Old timey pictures of old time Las Vegas when it and guess what? All the all the people in these old time pictures of old time Las Vegas, all white. All white. You know, and they, they just had some general old time Americana, I think. You know, on the beach scenes, city scenes. Some of it was real photos, some of it was drawings, you know. Um, all white. The good old days, all white. Now, completely contrasted. The opposite. So that's kind of a joke, you know, that they're really, they're trying to push this old-fashioned uh, Americana in Las Vegas at this hotel. It's it's kind of cool. Um, this is one of the oldest hotels in Vegas, downtown. But uh, even so, I mean, apart from the artwork on the walls, when you look at <laughs> the actual people here now, it's as non-white as it gets. And so, and then just outside my room, there's a water leak. Uh, a bit of a coincidence, but um, you know, it's not going to affect me. But it is kind of just outside my room. I got some buckets there, water leaking. You know, nothing really there. But just after everything, you know, uh, that happened up to that point, it's like, oh yeah, great. Might as well throw in some uh, uh, a leaky ceiling in the hallway right outside my room with some buckets there. I don't think I'll be able to hear it from inside. It's just one of those things. It's like, let's just top off all the non-white, anti-whiteism I saw today with what is probably a result of anti-whiteism too. Shoddy ceilings, you know. The, the 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 integrity of the building falling apart, not being maintained properly. Even though they did a renovation, some renovation work, there is still quality lacking, and which we know is a result of anti-whiteism. It's a result of diversity hiring and firing. And 
multiracialism. So things are literally falling apart and we are, so I'm seeing as many of us are, particularly in my face the last couple of days, things falling apart physically, culturally, which is nothing new, but it's just, just getting worse and worse. Um, physically, culturally, um, demographically, obviously, morally, the fabric, moral fabric of society is basically gone in this, with all, you know, in the anti-white environment that we live in. Um, everything has been degraded about our society, you know, about so about this piece of Western civilization and many others for sure. So um, on top of that, I got openly and directly discriminated against for being white, nothing more for being white positive. Uh, open discrimination, open discrimination, indirect, and hateful. It was actually hateful. Um, hush crimes and hate hoaxes happening daily. And uh, so, um, so that's that. Things are bad, folks. They're bad enough. We're, like Jason says, we're living in uh, a shifted societal context because of COVID and the anti-white destruction of our society, which they call riots. We have these societal shifts in context that are major. Things are bad. Anti-whiteism is at an all-time rabid high. Anti-white crimes against whites are at an all-time high. Hush crimes, hate hoaxes, all-time high. Anti-white discrimination, etc., etc., all-time high. So, like Jason says, they want to ramp up the anti-whiteism so that, like in schools, where they don't want it to just be passive anymore, they want it to be active. They want to chase down white people as much as they can. We are just one step away from South Africa. And I'm not saying that like it's anything new for you all or like it's not something to panic about um, it's just the reality of our situation and just to give us that assurance that now is the time to really rally to really rally ourselves um, as whites we really need to rally we need to circle the wagons we need to, to, to bring everything we got in this metaphorical, ideological, oratorical battle that we're in. War of messages. So, we we can let it be absolutely clear and certain that this absolutely is the time where we need to gather all of our strength and fire on all cylinders, metaphorically speaking. Because we don't want it to get any worse. Right? We're not going to let South Africa happen here. We are 
turning the tide around and going to victory, going to safety for our people, going to the promised land of beautiful white people, positive people with beautiful white civilization. It will be that beautiful promised land of milk and honey once again that we will and are rebuilding again starting from our souls, our bio spirits. So let's keep hearing, healing our bio spirits, let's keep healing our souls, and let's keep our eyes on that glorious western sunrise that is peeking over the horizon in that darkness, in that vast expanse of darkness. We are that star, that small little frosty galaxy that is glimmering ever so brighter and brighter each and every day. So, good things are coming. Thank you all for listening, being with me on this journey. Really appreciate it, really feel the community uh, with everyone who has the patience to listen to me blather around. A little tired, as you can tell, a little, little slow, but um, so we'll leave it there. Bid everyone good night, good evening, good morning, and uh, a good day or good night and uh, many blessings and love as usual and uh, white positivity white well-being no never any white guilt only love for our people and going free forevermore hallelujah